Hello, let's welcome Chong Liu, who's going to talk about adaptive topologies and higher rank signatures. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick. Uh, very glad to attend this wonderful workshop. So I'm going to talk about a uh, recent joint work um, together with Patrick and Hart. Uh, it's about adaptive topologies and higher rank signatures. So my uh, structure of my talk is quite simple. I just want to explain, uh, explain you what is adap adaptive topologies and what is a higher rank expected signature. And finally, I want to show that how they are related with each other. Okay, let's start with a very basic but fundamental object in probability theory, the adapted stochastic process, which is just a, a v-valued stochastic process over some given index, uh, time index site i, and defined on some filtered probability space. So here, uh, throughout my talk, I will assume that i is finite discrete high set, but actually the essential idea of my talk also works for uh, any general continuous time interval. Okay, given a adapted stochastic process, we usually regard it as a path-valued random variable, right? And then we can use a, a weak convergence to compare the laws of different stochastic processes. Of course, this methodology works very well in many, many cases. However, its weakness is also quite obvious. As you can see that the filtration plays no role in the weak convergence, right? Therefore, we completely ignore the evolution of the information uh, attached to the underlying process. So, this example actually confirms that the weak convergence in general cannot preserve the underlying information structure. Let's call the process on the left-hand side x epsilon. Uh, you can easily see that as e epsilon tend to zero, x epsilon converge weakly to the limit process x on the right-hand side. However, note that at time two, you can already predict the final outcome for x epsilon. Well, the sigma algebra generated by the limit process x at time two is still trivial such that you can see nothing about the future, right? So this means that although these two processes are very close in weak topology, but actually they have completely different pattern of information evolution. Here is another example coming from the uh, optimal stopping problem. I mean, as you have already seen, in the previous talk by Sebastian. Actually, we can show that this functional appeared in this optimization problem is not continuous in weak topology. So it seems that uh, we need to strengthen the weak convergence in order to incorporate the filtration. And such a new topology will have a great potential use in many applications here, right? where the evolution of information appears to be very important. Okay, so now, how can we modify the weak convergence? To get some intuition, let's go back to this example, okay? As we have noticed that, the discrepancy between these two processes appear when we look at the conditional distributions of them. So, it's quite nature to require the weak convergence also hold true for conditional distributions rather than only for the process itself. Based on this consideration, Ardosh in 1981 introduced the so-called extended weak convergence, which is exactly the weak convergence of the underlying prediction process denoted by x hat t, which is just the evolution of the conditional distribution of x given the, uh, the sigma algebra f t. So it describes how well one can predict the path x at time t. Actually, we can show that this new topology is very nice because, for example, uh, this functional is really continuous for extended weak convergence. Okay, it's a very nice topology, but uh, the story does not end up here because we can easily find some 
adaptive processes x epsilon and y epsilon such that as epsilon ten to zero, they have the same weak limit and the same extended weak limit. However, if you test continuous function against their nested conditional distributions, they are different. Okay, so here this this is a counter example, but I will skip it. Um, and just want to emphasize that actually the extended wave confidence can still not enough. It's not enough to characterize the full information structure of the underlying adaptive processes. And this example also tells us more structure about the underlying information uh, evolution of filtrations can be captured by iterating the conditional expectations. Okay. So using this idea, who and Kessler introduced the so-called adaptive topologies, uh, which can be used to characterize the full information structure of stochastic processes. First, they introduced the so-called adaptive functionals or conditional functionals, uh, which, uh, which is contracted by repeating these three steps. More precisely speaking, uh, adaptive functionals are mappings uh, which send adaptive process to bounded, uh, bounded random variable such that they contain continuous functions of marginals of x and they are stable under continuous compositions and they are stable under taking conditional expe expectations. In particular, the number of times the conditional expectation is taken is called the rank of the adapted functional f. For instance, this function has rank one and this function has rank two because as you see, we take conditional expectations twice for such f. Then we say that two adapted processes x and y have the same adaptive distribution up to rank r uh, if the expectation of fy is equal to the expectation of fx for any adaptive function of f with rank not bigger than r. Okay. So as, as from this definition, it's very easy to say that the, the r equal to zero case just corresponds to the coincidence of the loss of x and y, right? And uh, correspondingly, they define adaptive topology of rank r as the following. So we call that xn converges to x in this topology if the expectation of fxn converges to the expectation of fx for any f with rank not bigger than r. And it's not hard to say that the rank zero case correspond to the euro weak convergence and the rank one case is actually the r dosh extended weak convergence provided the underlying state space is compact. Okay, so now our task is to find a very nice way to characterize this adapted distribution and adapted topology for any integer r. How can we do it? The starting case r equal to zero is quite simple because we have a very classical result. The expected signature mapping does this job. So now let's recall uh, the signature of a discrete time parse. So it's defined like this. Okay, so actually, to be honest, I need to include the time component inside this definition to exclude the tree-like uh, uh, equivalence relation and to ensure that this mapping is injective, but for notational reason, I just omit it throughout the uh, my slides. Uh, of course, I also need to uh, assume that this uh, expectation is finite. For example, we can assume that the state space is compact. Just keep in mind. Okay, so the starting case is very good. Um, and we claim that actually we can find a so-called rank two signature map such that it does a job for characterize the uh, adapted uh, distribution of rank equal to uh, one, okay? So let's turn to the case r equal to one. Let's first uh, introduce our own dots. So we consider this space V2, which is a collection of pass valued parts, which means that for every fixed T2 in this time interval, X T2 is a pass from I to V, and we can define the rank two signature map on this space. So, of course, uh, you may ask, you may consider 
think about that. So um, this space, this power space is a Banach space. So of course you can directly define the signature mapping for X. However, here we provide another approach. Uh, so first for every fixed T2, X T2 is the parse. So we can compute a signature, right? Then we obtain a tensor algebra value parse, which allows us to compute the signature again to get the uh, rank two signature map as two, okay? It can be also written in this abstract way. So it's equal to the signature map of the pullback of signature map under the mapping X. So since, sorry, since uh, signature mapping takes values in the tensor algebra way, so if you take two signature mapping, then the target space should be the tensor algebra of the tensor algebra. So which are denoted by T2 way, and we call it the rank two tensor algebra. So since the signature map is injective, it's not hard to say that S2 is also injective. It's a very important feature for this rank two signature map. Okay, so here I make some, uh, make two remarks. So first, uh, actually the uh, rank two uh, tensor algebra T2 is a subset inside this space and it admits a nature grading scheme like this. Okay, so the second remark is actually in this famous paper, the authors introduced a notion of signature of signature, so uh, which are denoted by S2 theta. So for every pass X, uh, the signature of signature is just the signature map of the signature pass of X. I just want to emphasize that actually the rank two signature mapping defined above is not equal to the signature of signature because uh, S2 is uh, defined on V2, so they have different domain, okay? So the signature of signature mapping is defined on V1. But of course, they have the same target space uh, T2V. Okay, so the probabilistic counterpart of rank two signature is of course the rank two expected signature. So here we define I one with just the space of all Blair measures or probability measures as you want on the path space V1. And of course, the, the euro expected signature map as one bar is defined on this set, right? So now we define M2 way as the measure of the path space taking values in M1 way. And correspondingly, we can define rank two expected signature in this way, defined on M2 way with target space T2 way. And we can also show that the rank two expected signature is also injective, okay? So basically look at this expression, uh, maybe it looks a little bit uh, abstract, but if you consider a con concrete example, it will be very clear. So suppose X is a adapted process. So recall that it's a prediction process is just the conditional distribution. So of course it's a, a measure valued parse, right? X hat is a measure value pass. So for each T, it's a measure on the path space. So we can compute its expected signature with respect to this conditional probability. And therefore you get a pass in, uh, in tensor algebra. So it's a stochastic process taking values in tensor algebra. So of course you can use the expected signature mapping again to get S2 bar. So it's a rank two expected signature of the law of X height. Okay, so since this mapping is injective, so of course we have the following equivalence. So uh, X and Y have the same adapted distribution up to rank one, uh, if and only if the law of their prediction process is the same, and if and, if and only if they have the same rank two expected signature. So, this is our conclusion, okay? So rank two expect signature mapping does the job. And of course we can expect that uh, if you can define higher rank expected signature, then it will do the same job for higher ranking case. So to do this, you only need to uh, repeat this uh, construction R times to get the higher rank expected signature. So for instance, uh, we can consider rank R pass, which is defined inductively in this way. So VR is the space of pass from I to 
we are minus one and it has such explicit expression. So uh, this diagram, uh, of course we can define rank R signature on space we are such that inductively such that this diagram commutes for every R. So here TRV is just the tensor algebra of TR minus one way. So we call it rank R tensor algebra. Okay, so correspondingly you can define rank R measures as a stochastic counterpart of rank R parse and you define rank R expected signature on MRV. So I, I will skip the details actually because um, I think it should be clear if you understand the rank uh, two case. So I uh, just want to emphasize that uh, every time you apply the expected signature operation, you remove one rank of the underlying stochastic process and correspondingly you push, push uh, one rank up in the tensor algebra. So finally, the target space of SR bar is the rank R tensor algebra. Okay, so finally, let me introduce our main results. So recall again, the prediction process of adaptive process X is the evolution of conditional distribution. So X hat is itself a major valued stochastic process. So of course, uh, itself has prediction process, which we call it X hat two. And you continue this procedure to get a family of major valued stochastic processes, right? So we call it uh, X hat uh, R such that it's equal, just equal to the conditional distribution of X hat R minus one. So inductively defined. And uh, given uh, X hat R, it takes values in MR. So we can define the uh, expect, uh, rank R expected signature for X hat R, okay? So correspondingly, the target space is always rank R tensor algebra. Zero. So uh, let X and Y be two adaptive processes. Then for every non-negative indicator R, the following are equivalent. So they have the same adaptive distribution up to rank R. If and only if the law of the rank R prediction process of X hat of X is equal to the law of the rank R prediction process for Y. If and only if they have the same joint law of the first prediction process is up to rank R. Moreover, if they take values in a compact state space, then all above is equivalent to this relation. So they have the same R plus one, uh, rank R plus one expected signature. Okay, so this means that actually we we can show that uh, higher rank expected signature map is a feature map for uh, characterizing the relation adaptive distribution of any rank. Uh, John, uh, you have a few minutes left. Ah, thank you. I will finish soon. So actually this proposition just provides a, a explicit way to calculate the rank R expected signature. So you still use this recursion formula and uh, it satisfies this uh, relation. So actually it's just a simple consequence of power property, as you can check. So uh, finally, we can also show that uh, this uh, rank R expect signature also provides a way to matrix the adaptive topology of any rank R. So we just define the metric DR as the distance between the R, rank R plus one uh, expected signature, okay? So, uh, dr of xk and x converges to zero if and only if xk converges to x in the adaptive topology of rank r. So the case r equal to zero just means the weak convergence. So d zero uh, may try the weak convergence and r equal to one, d one defined here. So it gives you the distance uh, measured in uh, t2 norm. It may try the r dash extended weak convergence. Okay, so if uh, in, in addition, or, um, in addition, the underlying filtration is nature one, then actually D one even matrix all the following topologies. So for more details, we refer to this paper. Okay, so uh, let of course in the next step, step we want to uh, uh, extend our result to continuous time. Uh, uh, but here I want to emphasize that the difficulty arise because uh, in continuous time since the prediction process is a uh, uh, major-valued martingale, so a priori 
it only has Cadillac trajectories. So here we definitely need to use Cadillac raw path theory developed by um, Peter Fritz and Ilya Shifrif and others. And we want to also want to remove the compactness assumption because in this proposition, we definitely need the compactness because we want to use the stone version of us. Okay, so I think it's my talk and thank you very much.